So this unit number nine, um, or is it eight, whatever it is, is covering thermodynamics. We've already talked about enthalpy, which is part of thermodynamics, but we have to um, talk about three other ideas. First is spontaneity. We'll talk about entropy, and we'll talk about Gibbs free energy. Um, so this first video is going to cover the idea of spontaneity. So um, if we think about um, the reaction dependence on energy, there's a couple things that we already know. We've learned that reaction rates depend on energy in the form of activation energy. So in terms of kinetics, energy influences how fast a reaction will go um, because it influences the activation energy associated with that reaction. We've also learned that the extent to which a reaction proceeds depends on equilibrium and in part the energy associated with the reaction. So equilibrium is somewhat energy dependent. No, remember that the constant changes with energy and we can shift the position of equilibrium by changing the energy. So what we're going to do in this section of the thermodynamics um, information is examine the connection between energy and the extent of a reaction a little bit more closely. So review in the first law of thermodynamics, that was where we learned about enthalpy. Um, remember that energy can't be created or destroyed, so the total amount of energy in the universe is constant. Um, energy can, however, be converted from one form to another or transferred from the system to the surrounding and vice versa. Um, and we learned that um, when we worked on the unit that involved enthalpy, of course. So the first law lets us look at how energy changes, but it doesn't let us see if a particular process is favored or not. It just is saying, as you proceed, the system will lose energy, the surroundings will gain energy, or whatever the system, or whatever the, the situation is. So the first law simply conserves energy and says that in the overall big scheme of things, the total amount of energy in the universe is always going to be the same. So how do we deal with spontaneous processes? A spontaneous process is obviously those that can occur without any outside information. It doesn't need help. It doesn't need energy. It doesn't need anything in order to occur. So for example, um, if we have gas in the, the B side of this apparatus and we open the valve and there's nothing in the A side, what's going to happen? Well, the gas in B will spontaneously move and fill some of A so that there is equal quantities or equal pressures of gas in both sides of the container. That is a spontaneous process. The reverse is not going to happen. You don't spontaneously have all the gas molecules from A move back into B and stay there. That just doesn't happen. So some processes will happen automatically. Other processes won't. Another example, um, iron rusting or a nail rusting. That rusting is a spontaneous process. You put that nail out in the environment, expose it to water and air, it is going to automatically rust. It's going to undergo a chemical reaction and create iron oxide. The reverse is not likely to happen. So processes that are spontaneous in one direction are non-spontaneous in the reverse even though energy is conserved in both directions. So the amount of energy change going down is equal to the amount, equal to the amount, but opposite to the amount of energy change going up. Okay. Also want you to note that spontaneity has nothing to do with rate. This is a very slow reaction. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen as we sit and watch it. Um, so, please remember that 
Spontaneous doesn't necessarily mean fast. Spontaneous just means happens without any outside help. Um, processes that are spontaneous at one temperature may not be spontaneous at another temperature. So for example, above zero degrees, ice is going to spontaneously melt. Below zero degrees, the reverse process is spontaneous. Below zero degrees, you're going to have the liquid going to the solid. So depending upon the temperature, one direction will be spontaneous, the other direction may not be. Um, all right, so let's talk about enthalpy and spontaneity. Um, enthalpy alone cannot determine the extent of a reaction or even if a reaction is going to occur spontaneously. Um, if you think about it, if enthalpy was the only deciding factor, all exothermic reactions would be spontaneous because exothermic reactions don't rely on an outside source to supply them energy. Endothermic reactions would be non-spontaneous because in order to do an endothermic process, energy must be obtained from the surroundings. So if enthalpy was the only driving force behind spontaneity, exothermic processes would all be spontaneous, endothermic processes would not. Um, so then why is it that endothermic processes can be spontaneous? For example, why does ice melt spontaneously? Ice needs to absorb energy from its surroundings. Why does that happen spontaneously? So there has to be more to the idea of spontaneity than just lowering potential energy of materials, lowering the energy associated with the materials of the system. So to get there, let's take a look at reversible processes. Um, in a reversible process, the system changes in such a way that the system and the surroundings can be put back into their original states um, by exactly reversing the process. Um, changes are so infinitesimally small that you can very easily shift back and forth. So the energy difference between the system and the surrounding, this delta T, is so tiny that whether we add it or take it away is, is so small that it doesn't matter. That's a reversible process. An irreversible process doesn't have that situation. An irreversible process has to use work in order to go backwards. So for example, you've got a gas that will move a piston, just happens to move a piston um, during the course of a chemical reaction. In order to reverse it, in order to move that piston back into position, what has to happen? We're going to have to do work to lower that piston, to lower that piston and put it back where it was before. So irreversible processes cannot be undone um, by exactly reversing the change of the system you have to follow a different pathway. Here, there was no work done. Here, there has to be work done by the system. So an irreversible process is one that cannot go back and forth without requiring um, a substantial change in the pathway. So all spontaneous processes are therefore irreversible. You can't go one way um, and then very easily switch back. You can't reverse a process without changing the surroundings in order to get back to the original conditions. All real processes, therefore, are irreversible. So if something that happens in the real world um, is spontaneous, the reverse process is not going to happen. Um, spontaneity is controlled, obviously, by more than enthalpy, um, we figured out. Um, because since, an endo, since endothermic processes, ones in which system gains energy, can occur spontaneously, there has to be something more to this idea of spontaneity than just lowering the energy. We've talked about that before. 
This second factor is what we call entropy. And so in our next video, we will take a look at what entropy is.